Begin by finding a position for your body that feels comfortable for you. Maybe it's seated in a chair or on the cushion. Maybe it's lying down. Allow your body to get comfortable. Feel free to make as many adjustments as you need to establish comfort in the body. And you can do that at any time. If you become uncomfortable, reestablishing comfort in the body. Take a moment to soak in that comfort, to feel it, to enjoy it. And notice if there's any tension in your body, any tightness. If your muscles are tight or tense, gently invite them to relax, to let go, to loosen up. They may or may not be willing to do that at this time, but gently invite them to relax. And again, notice and enjoy that relaxation. It's like you're slowly dipping your body into a jacuzzi. Really allow yourself to be comfortable and relaxed and to enjoy that. And if you'd like, if it feels good for you, invite a gentle, easy smile to your face. It doesn't have to be a huge grin. Just a gentle smile. Slightly turning up the lips. And feeling what smiling feels like. If you dipped your body into a jacuzzi, of course, a smile would arise on your face. Let it be just like that. It really is like a place that you've entered, 
a place of comfort and relaxation with a gentle, easy smile on your face. That's where you are in your body, this place. And without leaving here, see if you can begin to involve your mind in the practice. In particular, by reflecting on anything in your life that you can summon a sense of gratitude for. I'm grateful to be practicing metta. I'm grateful for my friends. Grateful to have a place to stay and food to eat and good projects to work on. Bring to mind whatever resonates for you, whatever brings up that sense of gratitude for you. And hear yourself saying these things in your mind. I feel grateful for this and I feel grateful for that. Really hear it in your mind. Notice if there's any resonance in your body as you reflect on these things that you're grateful for. Your body may or may not respond, but if it does, if you can feel gratitude in your body, again, notice that and really enjoy it. Very good. Now, bring to mind someone who's easy for you to feel love for. Any person or animal, real or imaginary, that's easy for you to love. Consider who that might be for you. And bring this person to mind. See them in your mind's eye. In particular, imagine them being happy, perhaps smiling or laughing, recalling a memory that you shared with them, or whatever is appropriate to who they are. Imagine them being happy as a way to cultivate the desire that they might be happy, to wish that for them.
because you love them so much, it's natural that you'd want them to be happy. See if you can access that desire with your imagination. As you do this, out of the corner of your eye, keep an eye on how your body responds to this technique. If any joy or love or happiness arise, if it bubbles up, again, notice that and really enjoy it. Often just Bringing to mind this person that you love so much will bring a smile to your face or warmth into your heart. Elevate your overall sense of happiness. If that happens, notice it and really enjoy it. If it's helpful, you can use phrases in your mind, saying things like, I love you, or I care about you, or I want you to be so happy, or something that's particular to you and your relationship with this person. Anything you like, really, so long as it expresses this goodwill, this love this desire that this person might be happy. Any images or mental talk or fair game, as long as they're in accordance with that desire. You get to decide how to practice. Simply cultivate this intention of goodwill and love. It's as if there's a radio station that we're tuning into that broadcasts love. And we're using our easy to love person or animal to find that station, to tune into it. But it's not actually about that person. Everyone deserves the same love, the same care that you're just sending to this person your easy to love person or animal. 
See if you can sense that. Everyone is worthy of the same love and care, simply for being alive, for being a living being. Very good. Now, bring to mind someone who's not so easy for you to love. Your difficult to love person could be someone in your life that's annoying or frustrating for you to be around. It could be someone that's harmed you in the past or who's harming you currently. Could be someone that makes you angry or triggers you. Could even be yourself. Sometimes it's difficult to love ourselves. Consider someone who is difficult for you to love, whoever that may be. See if you can stay on this bandwidth with that person recalling that they also are worthy of love. They also deserve happiness. Simply for being alive. This may prove difficult. If it does, you can always go back to your easy to love person. Going back and forth as many times as you need to. But as long as it feels fun and interesting, see if you can stay with this person and the desire that they might be happy even in spite of the difficulties that they cause you. There's a few tricks that can help with this. One is to recall that this person was once a small child, an innocent baby, untainted by their actions or habit patterns, who had parents that loved them and wanted them to be happy, wished the best for them. Perhaps by imagining them as a small child, you can access that same love for them, even in spite of who they've become and the difficulties that they cause you. Another trick you can use is to consider that probably you would be happier if this person was happier. 
that from a self-oriented perspective, it benefits you if this person is happy. And so you can wish that for them. No harm in that. As long as it's good for them and for you, it's wholesome, commendable. Again, if it feels interesting and alive and not overly challenging, see if you can stay with this person and cultivate loving kindness for them, genuinely wishing them well, genuinely wanting them to be happy. If at any point this becomes difficult, you can return to your easy to love person. That's the skillful thing to do. No need to make it hard if it's hurting you, if it's challenging. But if it feels interesting and alive, this can be very healing. Use your best judgment as to what would be skillful and appropriate for you. No need to force it. See what seems best for you.
The most important thing is to practice loving kindness. It's not so important who you direct that loving kindness towards. You get to decide. Very good. Now, take a moment to look back on this practice period. What was it like for you? What happened? Did you learn anything new? Did you face any challenges? Let yourself integrate whatever wisdom has come from this session. And as you're ready, at your own pace, you can come out of the meditation. <laughs> 